motion the family tree of mankind. From them stemmed every color, creed, and nationality alive today. We know the fathers of mankind started their journey from here, but why did they leave? I'm hoping the few survivors they left behind, the San Bushmen, will help me solve this fundamental question. Fifty thousand years on, I hear their numbers are dwindling fast. Soon they could be gone entirely. I'm arriving not a moment too soon. Hello? Hi. I'm Spencer. And my two children, they are boys. This is my wife. Mesa. Do you want to see a picture of my daughter? Yeah. <laughs> this is her in her school uniform. Her, what's her name? Marga. Marga. I have to explain to them why I'm here. But how do I begin? For a start, what's Bushman for geneticist anyway? I sense this is really going to be tough for a lab rat like me. I just want to tell you a little bit about why I've come here. Um, it's mostly to find out about your way of life. I'm, I'm really excited to be here. You know, it's, it's such a dream for me to get to meet the San people, the Bushmen. In a way, you carry a secret in your blood. And you can think about it like a family tree. I explained the tree was just like the family that we all belong to. My family line is one of the small fractured branches at the very top, while theirs is the oldest on earth, the biggest branch at the base of the trunk. I get the feeling I'm not explaining this at all well, but they're way too polite to say so. This is really quite embarrassing. So it's a great privilege for me to come and meet my distant relatives and the people who give us a glimpse of all of our ancestors. So in one sense, we're all Khoisan, we're all San people. It's just that my skin is slightly redder. <laughs> we would like to thank you for the information that you brought for us. This is like a dream for me. Everything predicted in their blood seems to be written in their faces. It's like looking at a composite model of every face from around the world. The eye shape of East Asians, the high cheekbones of Mongolians, the mid-brown skin that could turn darker or lighter. So how do I know that of all the people on Earth, the Sun are direct descendants of our oldest ancestors? I'll try to explain a little better this time. I work with DNA, our very own manual of life. It's in our blood, in every cell of our body, orchestrating our life processes. DNA is a ladder of just four linked molecules, A, C, G, and T strung together in pairs in an incredibly long and complex sequence. If laid out, the DNA from one person would stretch to the moon and back 3,000 times. In our cells, this chain is broken into 46 bundles called chromosomes. Because of its sheer length, DNA is prone to develop small glitches in its sequence. They're called mutations. Everybody has them. When they occur, we pass them on to our children. We call these inherited mutations markers. As our chromosomes pass down through the generations, they carry these markers with them. They write our history. They are the source of our time machine, the way we can see back to our earliest ancestors. The markers I follow are found only in men, on their Y chromosome, the chromosome that makes men, men. But of course men don't travel alone, and the journey of man is the journey of everyone. I was walking through the village and I saw that they had massive piles of these sitting around everywhere, I call them monkey oranges. And they taste pretty good, they're a little bit like papayas. But I thought it would be a good idea to use them to explain exactly what we mean when we say we're following genetic markers. This is a man at some point in the past. The thing that makes him a man is his Y chromosome, a piece of DNA that's unique to men. When men have sons, they pass on their Y chromosome to those sons. Again, it's what makes them sons. So if we imagine that this man had two sons, 
they would have essentially identical DNA on the Y chromosome to their father. So they would get his Y chromosome, in effect. And if we imagine that they also have sons, those sons, the grandsons of this very first man, would also have essentially the same DNA. But occasionally, we pass on these pieces of DNA, we get a change in a single letter in the sequence. We can call those mutations or markers, and that's what allows geneticists to trace descent. And I've represented this marker with a little strip of tape, a little black bar. And just like before, all of the sons of this particular man will have essentially the same Y chromosome, so they will inherit this marker. And in that way, the marker acts effectively as a badge of descent, a marker of descent from this particular man, and that's what we follow. Now, as we move further down the tree, most of the sons will inherit just that single bar, but occasionally, as we saw before, we will get a second change in the Y chromosome. A second marker appears, showing descent from a particular man, in this case, this person, who has first that marker, which came from that person back there, but an additional unique change on his Y chromosome, which he then passes on to all of his descendants. So in the people that we're talking about living in the present day, in this part of the tree, they've got two markers. They clearly trace their descent from this man, but the first marker, remember, arose all the way back there, all those generations ago. The San Bushman markers are quite unlike any others found outside of Africa. In the world's family tree, their branch is the first to split from the rest. That's how I know they must be the oldest tribe on Earth. And now I'm here with them looking for clues to find out why their ancient brothers and sisters left this place. The first thing I noticed was their incredible language. They speak with clicks and other sounds totally alien to me. And the word for zero? Quara. 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 They try to teach it to me. And for two? Ta. Ta. And three? Lenny. And four? Go. 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 I can't get that for Is this strange language a window on the past? Did our ancestors speak like them? Merritt Rulin, a linguist from my old university, Stanford. Bushman is the only family which has clicks. Those kinds of sounds. None of the other world's language families have these sounds. So this is really what makes Bushman, uh, Bushman languages different from all of the other world's languages. There's a reasonable hypothesis that these clicks are, in, in fact, ancestral sounds which have been lost in all of the other uh, world's languages, probably lost just once in Africa. And then the group which lost these clicks left Africa and spread throughout the entire world. When I ask another colleague, paleoanthropologist Richard Klein, also from Stanford, he goes even further. Speech is, is more than just communication. It's also the way you model your world. You can ask what-if questions. What if I mounted this piece of stone on the end of this shaft in this way, and I put a string across this bowed thing, and I tried to shoot the, the shaft with this bowed thing? What if? You know, it's that, that kind of question is something that uh, probably requires language to be answered effectively, even if it's just one person talking to themselves in their mind's eye. 50,000 years ago, click was a new and complex language. There'd been nothing like it before. But there were other innovations, too. They showed me this. It's a spear tip finely crafted from bone. It might not seem like much today, but when our ancestors started using it, it was the last word in technology, the smart missile of its day. In every detectable archaeological respect, meaning you know, the manufacture of art, the widespread use of materials like bone and ivory and shell, uh, the burial of the dead with, with ceremony or with ritual, in every detectable archaeological respect, after 50,000 years ago, you see this burst of creativity. There's a big difference in behavior. The form is fixed, and culture takes off.